One of the best ways to understand large language model APIs is to interact with them via code and experiment with them. And this is what we're gonna do in this video. We will use Jupyter Notebooks uh, via VS Code. And the reason we use Jupyter Notebooks in this lesson is because this is an in interactive environment which allows us to experiment with these models. We are not building a production grade application yet. Uh, we're just exploring, we're experimenting and seeing the output of these LLMs in an interactive way uh, will help us better understand these models. Uh, in this video, we will use OpenAI API. I encourage you to also experiment with other APIs. In order to use uh, OpenAI API, we will need to install some libraries. We'll also install 1db uh, for tracking our experiments. Then we need to import um, all of the, uh, the libraries that we'll need in these experiments. And we need to make sure that we have OpenAI API key environment variable set. So let's double check. I already set it on my system. If you don't have uh, this uh, key, um, you will see an instruction on how to get that key uh, below this video. Because uh, we are uh, tracking our work because we want to get into the habit of recording what we're doing with LLMs, we will also enable logging to weights and biases. And we have the convenient auto log function for OpenAI, which will log the results, the, the calls uh, the, to, to the API and the results in a weights and biases table. Now, the first thing that we uh, would like to, to experiment with is tokenization. OpenAI has this tick token library, which allows us to tokenize text to decode text that has been tokenized. And it's good to, to get an intuition on how sentences or words are split into tokens. So let's use tick token um, to, uh, to, dec to encode and decode uh, a sentence, weights and biases is awesome, and see how this is gonna be split in tokens. If you think about splitting this, probably the most natural way is to just use spaces as a way of indicating the tokens. However, if you think about all of the text that is on the internet and on GitHub and in Wikipedia and just splitting it on spaces, that may potentially result in millions of tokens. And we know that we need to have a set vocabulary size because this is how the LLM is predicting the output prob probabilities. So we need to contain the size of our vocabulary. And for that reason, some, some of the words that we have may be split into, into subwords, into units, and uh, this will create tokens. So let's run this and see what happens. By the way, different models may have different tokenizers. So in this case, we're picking a tokenizer for text DaVinci 003 model. Um, but uh, in case you're using a different model, you may need to pick a different tokenizer. So we can see now the text weights and biases is awesome, is a, a combination of tokens with the following uh, numbers. And um, we can see this is a list of numbers. Uh, but uh, that's still difficult to understand what the tokens are. So we can decode the tokens one by one and see what each of the values corresponds to. And we can see the word we is a separate token and then it So weights actually was split into two tokens uh, with the following numbers. Then the ampersand is its own token. Then biases is again, like combined of two tokens is uh, is a single token, awesome. Again, the popular word is a token and the exclamation mark is also a token with a value zero. It's interesting that uh, the whole vocabulary of token, st tokens starts with the exclamation mark. And you can also see that some of these tokens contain spacing. So, uh, and that's because like once we decode these tokens, once we, um, once we want to put them together, we want to make sure that we, we also preserve spaces. So spaces uh, are part of the tokens and maybe its own token as well. <music> 